Uh, obviously, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, this long-standing posture hearing is being held now under a shadow of the tragic events that happened just yesterday afternoon at Fort Hood. As I know you all understand, any time the Army loses a soldier, we all mourn when that loss comes at the hands of another soldier. And indeed, uh, when that event occurs at the, at the very place that suffered so much pain, so much anguish just four and a half years ago, uh, it, it only adds to, to the sorrow and the all-consuming sense of loss the Army is feeling this day. Our first responsibility, as I know you share, is to the families of the fallen, uh, also to those, of course, who have been wounded and those close to them, their family, their loved ones, uh, as they uh, make their way, hopefully, on a road to full recovery. Uh, our thoughts and prayers, but most importantly, our, our actions and our every effort will be with those families, will be with those survivors, uh, whatever the struggle. We have ordered all possible means of both medical and investigatory support, as well as uh, added behavioral health counselors. Uh, I want to give a tip of the hat to uh, VA Secretary Rick Shinseki, who immediately reached out and offered any support from the Veterans Administration uh, in, in respect to needed personnel. Uh, and in speaking, as both the Chief and I did late last evening to Lieutenant General Mark Milley, uh, for the moment the immediate needs seem to uh, be met, but we're going to monitor that uh, very, very carefully. As I know all of you recognize, this is an ongoing investigation and one that uh, occurred just 15 or so hours ago. And, uh, even at this point, the circumstances remain very fluid, but we recognize we, we owe this committee particularly, but also this Congress, the facts, what we know and when we know it. And I want to promise all of the members here this morning that uh, we will work with you as we go forward together so that uh, we can effectively, you can effectively discharge your oversight responsibilities. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to take a brief opportunity to say to the Fort Hood community and to the Army family worldwide, this is a time once again to come together, to stand as one, uh, as they have so many times before, drawing strength from each other. As this committee knows so well, the past 13 years have been fraught with much loss, with much pain, much suffering, but through it all, Men and women of the United States Army, their families, the civilians who support them have come through the storm together. And I know, as we have in the past, we'll come out the other side of this tempest, poor for the losses, but, but stronger through our resolve. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can take a moment now to give you the updates that, that you've requested and then defer to the chief for the Pur purpose of the posture statement, if you'd like. That'd be fine. Thank you. Uh, based on our discussions last evening with uh, with uh, Lieutenant General Mark Milley uh, and a subsequent conversation I had about 1045 with the Secretary of Defense, uh, these are the facts as we understand them. But again, uh, things are changing even at this moment. Uh, the specialist, uh, the lead shooter involved, joined the United States Army in June of 2008. When he first enlisted in the Army, he was an 11 Bravo. That's an infantry soldier, as most of you know. He later, um, upon uh, re-upping, transferred his MOS to an 88 Mike uh, truck driver. Uh, we are tracking at the moment that he did have two deployments, including one four-month, approximately four-month deployment uh, to Iraq uh, as a truck driver. Uh, his records show no wounds, no involvement, uh, direct involvement in combat. Uh, as uh, General Milley said, no record of Purple Heart or any injury uh, that might uh, lead us to further investigate uh, a battle-related TBI or, or such. Uh, he was uh, undergoing uh, a variety of treatment and diagnoses for mental health conditions, ranging from depression to anxiety uh, to some sleep disturbance. He was prescribed a number of, uh, of drugs to address those, uh, including Ambien. Uh, 
He was seen just last month by a psychiatrist. Uh, he was fully examined. Uh, and as, as of this morning, we had no uh, indication on the record of that examination that there was any sign of, of uh, likely violence, either to himself or to others, no suicidal ideation. Uh, so the plan forward was to uh, just continue to monitor and to treat him uh, as deemed appropriate. Uh, the alleged weapon uh, was a 45 caliber that the soldier had recently purchased. He lived off post. Uh, we try to do everything we can to uh, encourage uh, soldiers to register their personal weapons, even when they live off post. We are not legally able to compel them to register weapons when they reside off post, but the minute that soldier brought that weapon onto the post, it was not registered, and it was uh, under our rules and regs being uh, utilized, obviously, illegally, and with not proper clearance or foreknowledge by, by the command. Um, he is married. Uh, his wife was being questioned the last I was informed last evening. Uh, they are natives to Puerto Rico. Uh, again, uh, the background checks we've done thus far show no uh, involvement with extremist organizations of any kind, but as General Milley said to me last evening, and I know the Chief and I fully support, we're not making any assumptions by that. Uh, we're going to keep an open mind and an open investigation, and we will go where the facts lead us, and, and possible extremist uh, involvement uh, is still being looked at very, very carefully. Uh, he had a clean record in terms of uh, his uh, behavioral, no uh, outstanding bad marks for any kinds of major misbehaviors that uh, we are yet aware of. So uh, you know the conditions uh, of those who were involved in the incident. There were three victims who have tragically lost their lives. Uh, the other killed in action in that, in that moment was the shooter who took his own life when confronted uh, by uh, a military police officer, a female, uh, 16 others wounded, uh, three that were considered critical, the others uh, of varying uh, severity, but considered by and large stable. But we obviously uh, are going to continue to make sure they get the best of care because we want to uh, ensure absolutely that no, no bad thing comes out of this more than already has. So. That uh, is pretty much what we know at this moment, Chairman. Thank you very much, Secretary. And if it's appropriate, I'll, I'll yield to the Chief for, uh, for the posture comments. General. Uh, Chairman, if I could just add a few comments. Uh, first, uh, once again, uh, we talk a lot in the Army that we have an Army family and, and we've lost young people who are part of our Army family, and we take that incredibly serious. For me, uh, this hits close to home. I've, I've spent a lot of time at Fort Hood personally. I was a brigade commander, a division commander, and the corps commander at Fort Hood. I understand the resilience of that community, the resilience of the people there, how proud the soldiers are of what they do, and we will do everything we can to ensure they continue to move forward. I would just say that I believe that some of the procedures that have been put in place following the incident of four and a half years ago did help us yesterday. Uh, the alert procedures that were in place, the response, the training that has gone into the response forces that responded, I think contributed to making this uh, something that could have been much, much worse. So we will continue to monitor the force of the Army and the resources of the Army will be behind Fort Hood. Uh, we are very confident in the leadership of Mark Milley, who is, uh, I think as many of you know, just returned from Afghanistan as the commander of, of, uh, of the Corps over there. And is a very experienced commander and uh, we will continue to support them. Uh, the only thing I would add to the facts that the Secretary provided that this was an experienced soldier. He spent actually uh, nine years in the Puerto Rico National Guard uh, before coming on active duty. So he's a very experienced uh, soldier, had, it, had it a one-year deployment to the Sinai uh, with the National Guard, and then had a four-month deployment in Iraq. It was the last four months 
at the end of 2011 from August to December 2011. Uh, we will continue to work and, and work through this issue and continue to investigate. And as we do that, uh, we will provide uh, information to all. Uh, the other, only other thing I would say, there's great interagency cooperation. The FBI has provided significant assistance as well as the state of Texas, as well as the Veterans Affairs, as the Secretary pointed out. Uh, so we will continue to work this. Uh, we have an incredibly talented, resilient Army. We'll be incredibly, we'll continue to be incredibly resilient and move forward, but we will also uh, reach out to our family, the victims and the families of our victims uh, of this tragic incident.